In this video, we're going to be taking a tour of MicroStation Connect Edition. We're going to start in the top left corner. The first thing we're going to see up here is what's referred to as the workflow. Now, if I click on this, you're going to see there's two options. There's drawing and task navigation. Now, I happen to be in a two-dimensional or 2D file, so that's why I only see these two options. I'm going to go to a 3D file, so I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going to click on the File Open, and we're going to see how this changes. So I'm going to open up the 3D file. I'm going to double click. I'm going to now go look at the workflow. And you can see I see additional options like modeling and visualization. So if I choose modeling, you're going to see I get the curved, solid surfaces, things like that. So we're going to go back to the 2D file. And we're going to do this by going to the bottom left corner. And you can see a little green circle with the white arrow, which is go to previous view group. If I click on this, this will close the file that I'm in and reopen the file I was in prior. Now again, MicroStation can have one file open per session. Just understand that your file that you were in before is closed. As we're talking about the interface, there's going to be some of you who are going to be transitioning from MicroStation V8i to MicroStation Connect Edition. In the prior version, we had something referred to as the task navigation, and we've now transitioned to the ribbon, which we'll talk about in a moment. To get back to the V8i interface, to the right of Workflow, you'll see there's something that's called Technology Preview. Select VDI Mode. I'm going to click on this. Right now, it's currently set to Ribbon. I'm going to change this to Dialog. And when I do this, you're going to notice on the left-hand side, you're going to see there's the task navigation that you may have been familiar with. Now, the letters on the left-hand side are there because the preference for this is turned on. I'm going to demonstrate how that can be turned on or off. So if I go to the Quick Access Toolbar, Headquarters has taken the liberty of adding preferences there. If I click on this, under the Position Mapping, you can see Position Mapping is turned on and also Show Position Mapping Aids. Now if I turn this off and I click OK, you can see they disappear. Now if I turn those back on, this is going to give me access to using the keyboard to get back to tools the way we did in V8i. So now if I hit the letter Q, my linear elements will appear. So that's a way for you to get back to the prior interface if you feel comfortable with that. You still have the ribbon across the top. It doesn't remove that. So we're going to go ahead and change this back to ribbon. And then we're going to change the workflow from task navigation back to drawing. Now we're going to take a look at the quick access toolbar across the top. This is immediately to the right of our workflow. We have the file open. We also have file close. This is something that was added by headquarters. We also have show previous or open previous file and open next file. These are very handy if you're working through 100 DGN files in one folder. You can just with one click open the next file. Now we also have things like save, save settings, to the far right, we have our iPlot and print, and headquarters is added in design file settings and also preferences. Now, these can be accessed from the backstage, some of these items. So we're going to show you how to do that. In the upper left corner, there's a tab called File. And this is very common to other software also, your Office products. If I click File, this will take me to what we refer to as the backstage. This is where we're going to have things like New File, Open, save, save as. About halfway down, we have settings. If I click there, we have more settings. We have them for user, system, file, configuration. Under user, this is how I can get to program my function keys, or I can get to my preferences, which again, headquarters added that to the quick access toolbar. So this is a way for you to find some things that aren't on the working page. So we're going to go back. We're going to click on the arrow in the circle. This takes us back here to the main page. Now we're going to take a look at some of the tabs here. The first tab is called Home, and under that are Groups. You can see there's Attributes, Primary. Under Attributes, this is where you would set Level, Color, Style, and Weight. And this is very important when you're about to draw a feature, whether it's a right-of-way line or an existing fence or edge of pavement. There are attributes, Level, Color, Style, and Weight that need to be set so you're compliant with Caltrans standards. Now, to the right of attributes is primary. This is where we can go to get to our attached reference or raster. We have selection, we have element selection and fence. Placement is a grouping of different tools, everything from place smart line to place cell, place text. We also have manipulate, copy, move, scale. We also have our 
copy parallel there. Modify element, the modify group. We have trim, we have the delete, change element attributes. And at the end, we have our groups, which is where we put our create complex chain or create complex shape. When you choose a tool, the settings for that tool will be displayed on what we refer to as the tool settings window. This is currently on the right side of my screen. I'm going to move it over here to the center. Now, this is something you want to leave open all the time. You don't want to close it. It's just a waste of a click because if you close it, it will come right back when you activate another tool. So I'm going to go to the Play Smart Line tool right up above. I'm going to click on that. And what you'll see on the tool settings window, it tells me the name of the tool I'm in. So if you're ever curious what tool you're in, locate your tool settings window. It'll tell you. And then shows me the settings for that tool. Now, if I was to change tools, let's say Play Circle, tells me the name of the tool, gives me the options for placing a circle. Again, if you're an AutoCAD user transitioning, that generally was on the status bar at the bottom, the key in field. This is where we put our options. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the right. And you want to find a place on your screen that you can place that and leave it. Now, the other tabs across the top, we have things like view, we have annotate. So if I click on annotate tab, this is where we have everything from placing text to cells and patterns and dimensioning. We also have the option for attach. If you're attaching a reference file, a raster, a point cloud, reality mesh, things like that. Jumping over to the far right, we have some Caltrans specific tabs. So if I click on CT, you're going to see on the far left your CT primary. This is something that you should be somewhat familiar with from the prior version. But one of the icons on there, which is CT line style selector, click on the icon. This opens the CT line style selector. Now this is very helpful because this helps me set the settings, level, color, style for the feature I'm about to draw. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to go to the home tab because I want to see my attributes up here. Right now, my level, color, and style are set, in this case, to do an existing right-of-way. So if I come down here, and I can choose different disciplines. So if I click the Set Select, I can do basic line codes, roadway, utilities, landscape, and so on. So if I choose line code, this will bring up my plans presentation settings. So if I scroll down on the list here, if I go to 15, which is match line, if I click the button 15, it's going to change my active settings up above. So if I click button 15, you can see my level, my color, style all changed so that now if I draw a match line, it will be compliant to the Caltrans standards. This is a very important thing. So you want to be comfortable with using the CT line style selector. It'll help you be compliant. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Now another way for you to be compliant, you can use the alt data to match an existing element. So as an example, if I wanted to draw this feature, the existing hydro down here, if I hold the alt key down and I left click, what you'll notice on my attributes up here, you'll notice that it changed to match those attributes, level, color, style, and weight. If I was to alt data on the edge of this line, you can see it matched those attributes. This is a way for you to be compliant to the settings that are already available to you through elements in your file. To get to tools in MicroStation, you want to be able to get to them as quick as you possibly can. And we've introduced a new feature in MicroStation Connect. It's called the pop-up. So if I hit on my keyboard, the space bar, at my cursor will appear the pop-up menu. And it has three rows available to me. The first row is essentially the home tab. We have attributes, we have primary, we have selection, placement, and so on. The second row is access to discrete tools. For example, to click on copy element, that would put me in the copy element tool. Now, if I hit the space bar again, the bottom row, just like the first row, when you select one of these items, it will bring up a secondary dialog. So for example, under measure, if I click here, this will bring up a secondary dialog allowing me to choose from the different options. So there's measure distance, so I could select that. If I hit the space bar again, the first and the third row bring up secondary dialogs, giving you additional choices. The second row, that's discrete access right to the tool. You don't have to bring up a secondary dialog. So the pop-up menu is invoked by the space bar. 
So I'm going to hit Escape to dismiss that. Now, the view controls in MicroStation. How do I zoom in and zoom out? Your mouse is going to get you the majority of what you need to do. So the wheel on the mouse, if I scroll the wheel, you can see I'm zooming in and out. Pretty straightforward. If I, on my mouse, hold down simultaneously my left and right button and hold them down, I can pan my drawing around. So holding down left and right simultaneously is pan. If I double click both left and right buttons simultaneously, it is a little tricky, but if I do that, that's my fit view. So you can see double click left and right. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's a quick way for you to fit. Now there are other view controls which are available either from the view border at the top left. You can see there's our zoom in and zoom out, which was accomplished by scrolling the wheel. And there's also a hand, which is pan, which we also invoke that by holding the left and the right button down. So there's another way to get your view controls. That's holding down the shift key and right clicking. This will bring up view options. You can get to window area, zoom in, there's your fit. You also can get to your view rotation for rotating and view previous, view next. This is a quick way for you to get there. So I'm going to hit escape to dismiss that. Along the bottom of our screen, we have something called the status bar. Now I'm going to go to my Play Smart Line tool, make that the active tool, and then we're going to look at the bottom of our screen and we're going to go from left to right. So you see at the very bottom, there's a Play Smart Line and then a greater than symbol and then a prompt what to do next. This will always tell you the tool you're in and what to do sequentially next in that operation. To the right of that is our message center. And then if we move further to the right, we have our active snaps. We have our active locks. Again, it tells us the active level that we have set. And then to the right of that are actually empty at this moment. But this tells us whether we have a selection set. We have a fence active, our current focus, you see the little house there. So the status bar, as the name implies, gives us the status of what's going on in MicroStation. So the last thing we'll look at is on the far right side of our screen, and that's where headquarters has taken the liberty of docking your snaps. We will talk about this more in another video, but this is where they're located. So you can see on the right side. Now, there are additional snaps that are currently hidden. If I right click on one of these snaps, you're going to see a pop-up menu and you'll see there's a couple of there that are turned off for right now. That's a quick overview of the interface in MicroStation Connect Edition. We will see you in the next video.